This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University, and today I wanted to talk about a certain kind of lightning network attack that a lot of you have been asking about. It's called the lightning replacement cycling attack. But just to get everyone on the same page, the lightning network is a layer two solution that's been built on top of the Bitcoin network, which is often called the base layer. And this has been built to allow for fast and cheap payments like the internet and like the traditional fiat financial system, we can expect Bitcoin to scale in layers. The Lightning Network may turn out to be one of those essential scaling layers, or it may ultimately be cast aside in favor of a better protocol. Now, the Lightning Network uses BTC, uses Bitcoin, the asset, as its main asset. It does not use any other coin. It does not use Litecoin or something like that. Lightning Network payments are routed through payment channels that are themselves secured by real Bitcoin that has been locked up on the base layer in a two of two multi-sig. So when payments take place on the Lightning Network, they are not increasing the supply of Bitcoin because an equal amount of Bitcoin has been locked up on the base layer in order to fund that particular Lightning channel. Lightning is an open protocol, can be used by anyone, and Contra XRP people and people who don't know what they're talking about, the Lightning Network is not centralized or controlled by any corporation like Lightning Labs. If you want to learn more about the Lightning Network, I will link to one of my old videos in the description notes below. Now, what's happened in the past few days? Lightning Network dev Antoine Riard just published a paper detailing a potential attack on Lightning. And this is what many of you have been asking about. It was posted to his GitHub and it's called Replacement Cycling Attacks on the Lightning Network. As part of this, he announced that he is halting his personal involvement with the development of the Lightning Network and its implementations, including coordinating the handling of security issues. And he had this comment to make, I think this new class of replacement cycling attacks puts Lightning in a very perilous position where only a sustainable fix can happen at the base layer. In other words, a soft fork or change to the base layer. For example, adding a memory intensive history of all seen transactions or some consensus upgrade. Deployed mitigations are worth something in face of simple attacks, though I don't think they're stopping advanced attackers as said in the first full disclosure mail. And I will link to this comment in the description notes below. If you're finding this video helpful so far, I just ask you to take a moment to subscribe, to like this video, to leave a comment or question, and to share this video with a friend. First question many people have, is a Lightning Network about to get destroyed? I don't think so. This is quite unlikely, simply because there is already a huge bug bounty available if you can hack the Lightning Network. And no one has claimed it yet, even though Riard has published that paper showing exactly how these kind of attacks can be done. There is still approximately $180 million worth of Bitcoin sitting on the Lightning Network, as we can see here, approximately 5,284. Bitcoin. And so if there were a problem, we would expect to see this being drained and that has not happened at all. Now, I think Riyadh did the right thing here. Bitcoiners should be focused on potential network and protocol vulnerabilities. We need Bitcoin and the Lightning Network to work well when we need it most, and especially in an environment where it is being attacked by nation state attackers, which is the kind of environment that we are now entering. We're entering the stage where they fight us, which is the stage right before we win. Still early to tell whether this is an actual critical vulnerability that cannot be fixed. This is unfortunately a highly, highly technical area that's probably under understood only by about a few hundred people worldwide, and I am not one of them, unfortunately. For now, the bulk of your Bitcoin, as always, should be stored in cold storage using a hardware wallet or multi-sig, and it should be secured on the base layer in cold storage. I never keep more than about $100 in my Lightning Network wallets. So if the Lightning Network were to be destroyed, that's the most that I can lose. And I would suggest you treat your Lightning wallets in the same way that you treat your software wallets or your hot wallets as something for spending change and not for large amounts of life savings. If you want to read more about exactly how a Lightning replacement cycling attack works, I thought of going through this, but it's quite complicated. And even having read it a few times, it's hard for me to decide whether this is a real threat to the Lightning Network, but I'll link to this in the description notes below so you can read about it. Also, uh, Daniel Goldman here did a great uh, example and walkthrough. I'm not qualified to tell you whether this is the exact attack that was detailed in this paper, but it does look 
uh, completely legitimate and talks about how this kind of attack would play out. I thought Peter Todd had a good way of approaching this yeah, on Stacker News in one of his comments. Peter Todd, of course, one of the central Bitcoin devs, he said uh, in his comment, this is one reason we have layered systems. If Lightning devs have in fact screwed up, and again, this is coming from Peter Todd, who understands Bitcoin perhaps better than most people do at a, so at a software level. This is one reason we have layered systems, he says, if Lightning devs have in fact screwed up, better that Bitcoin continues operating while Lightning figures out how to fix things with full disclosure and many competent people understanding the issue. Right now, Antoine Riard hasn't even published an easy to read explanation of what the problem actually is. He seems to have convinced a decent number of people involved in Lightning development that there is an issue, but he hasn't convinced many people who aren't intimately involved with the Lightning, with Lightning Network BTC development, nor is his we're all, quote unquote, we're all doomed view on it shared widely. Anyway, there's no way this issue actually wrecks all of Lightning. You can do routing just fine through semi-trusted node relationships. It's not as decentralized as we want, but even in the worst case, a large proportion of usage of Lightning will work fine. So this does seem to be one mitigation, one temporary mitigation, and it's not a very good one because it involves trust rather than verification. But if you only open Lightning channels to people that you have a real life relationship with, if you only open up Lightning channels with people that you trust, it would seem that this is mitigated. Of course, this is not a solution. We do not want to set up systems based on trust. Now's a good time to remind everyone that we are still very early. It's a bit of a cliche, but Bitcoin and our involvement with it and its ultimate development is still quite early. Your Bitcoin on the base layer in your hardware wallet where your private keys are stored, your Bitcoin that is locked in on the base layer is still highly, highly secure if you hold your own private keys, not if you leave your Bitcoin on Coinbase or Kraken or Binance or something like this. How do we know that your Bitcoin on the base layer is still highly secure in spite of possible problems with the Lightning Network? Again, the bug bounties are absolutely huge. If we look at the top five or six richest Bitcoin addresses, we can see the public addresses listed right here. For example, this is widely believed to be the Binance cold wallet. Here's another Binance cold wallet and the Bitfinex cold wallet. And we can see the amounts of capital stored in these addresses is absolutely enormous 8.4 8 billion 6 billion almost 4 billion almost 4 billion and so this is a very large bug bounty even if it took you two billion dollars to find the correct hackers you could still walk away with a six billion dollar profit so bitcoin itself on the base layer remains secure and we will continue to see growing pains with the bitcoin ecosystem this is to be expected nothing is ever going to be completely smooth but we will keep an eye on these cycling attacks i wish i was more uh, technically able to make a decision about what's happening here but for now be cautious with your lightning usage and store your life savings to the extent you have it in bitcoin on the base layer and not in a lightning channel if you enjoyed this video be sure to hit that subscribe and like buttons Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.